before explaining this complete mess of the workbench, uh, let's just get this beer opened. And let's talk about this. Now, I set out with this uh, pretty simple project. I had an old XS70 um, camera that I wanted to power from a power supply instead of the dead battery pack that it had. And I thought, hey, I just used the battery charger. Uh, that can probably power the camera directly. So after hacking the um, battery um, front end PCB here of the dead battery pack, uh, I could get the charger to think that I was charging a battery, but the output voltage from this was 4.15 volt DC. Now these batteries are specced for 3.7 volts, and when I fed the camera with 4.15, it would give me a message about I had to change the battery pack. And that was not due to over voltage because I first got this working when I fed it 4.5 volt DC. Um, and even before that, I thought, hey, this battery pack, that's a standard from when Nokia had the uh, 3310 um, uh, mobile phones. So I had a old Nokia charger and that's actually rated 3.7 volt DC, but that outputs 9 volt DC. Um, so the mobile phone must have had some kind of DC-DC uh, converter inside of them back then. So that did not work either. So I at last got hold of one of my good old Volcraft um, adjustable power supplies. Changes to 4.5 volt DC and I could fire the camera up. Now, I also wanted to add a fan because the camera does heat up a lot uh, when you use the uh, CHDK uh, software on it. Uh, it is mostly the uh, Digic CPU and the optics that do heat up. And it is pretty neat that the um, CHDK software actually writes the optic um, temperature up here in the right corner. So I can actually observe that with the fan here running at, it's a 12 volt DC fan, so it just runs at the 4.5 volts, that it runs nice and slow and quietly, that it can actually cool the Optex and the CPU down to 30 degrees Celsius um, while yeah, running con in continuous um, high speed uh, photography mode. Let's see if it switch on the CHDK mode here and Press the trigger. So now it runs continuously um, measuring any changes in the scene and that takes a lot of CPU power. As we can see the temperature here quickly rises up to above ambient. So what I need to add now is uh, to cut up the old front plate here. Saw most of it away bend it up and then use it for a fan mount to have a just go free of the lens here and still cool the optics and CPU sitting here. The battery front end, um, the small PCB here, has a uh, charged supervi supervisory IC or some fuses, I'm not quite sure, but it also have a third pin um, between the negative and positive uh, connector of the battery. And uh, measuring between here, there is a 10 kilo ohm resistance. And that is also how I made the uh, camera accept this battery um, adapter, which is just the old uh, battery case that I used here. And I have replaced it with some new contact points. And from negative to the middle pin, I have connected a 10 kilo ohm uh, resistor and then just the positive pin over here and that's actually enough to make the camera accept this uh, adapter here. So uh, let's just do a test of uh, how the camera will react. Now if we activate the um, fast burst preview, mo preview mode here, uh, you can see in the settings that it has the uh, columns, rows, threshold, compare interval and so on for the 
auto triggering. And I've just tried to uh, activate the mode here. You can see it just starts shooting a lot of pictures because I can't hold the camera still. So uh, let's just do a drop test. Set up the camera here, take the uh, test banana, activate the camera, and let's see what that gave us. And then we have it. We captured the banana mid flight. So that's uh, without flash, since it's a little blurred, but that's about what uh, you can achieve with this uh, auto-triggering just from the image sensor data changing. Mm -hmm.